All right, so I've got two members of Anonymous here at Occupy San Antonio. This is day two. Uh, give us an update. Tell us what's going on. Basically, the people are still talking to each other, getting our goals set, making sure everybody knows what we're here for. Um, right and, now, and what are you here for? We are here, basically, we want the control of the money returned back to the people. Right now, the 1% that can control the Federal Reserve and the rest of the centralized banks of the world are in control. They pay our politicians. It doesn't matter what their political stance is. Once they're in office, they got to do what they're paid for to do. And not only that, the corporations own the rest of the Senate and the House of Representatives. We need the money returned back to the government to keep it. That way we can get the corruption and out of the government. Okay, and just getting corporate money out of politics, you think we'll do that? And take, well, the power but would, would Congress so not still give favors to corporations? Well, we want to take the money, the power of the money, away from the centralized banks of the world. They can, okay. They can print the dollar bill out without our permission, without the government's permission, just because another bank needs money. When they print that dollar bill out, our government owes one dollar plus interest. Who pays that? Where does the money go? To the people. It's loaned out to people who can't afford the things they want, and it just puts them farther in the debt. So, what is your plan? Let, let's just say that the Federal Reserve ends tomorrow. And, you know, this is very hypothetical because I don't think that they're going to abolish themselves tomorrow. But, let's just say Federal Reserve ends tomorrow. What happens then? The because corporations would still exist, they would still find a way to buy off politicians. They won't be able to, they won't be able to put us in the debt, alright, as much as they're doing now. Also, that's not the only argument. Uh, actually, the federal government could still put people in debt because the Constitution gives them the authority to borrow money. Yes, but they usually do both, and the politicians are supposed to listen to the people what the people want. Alright, hold on. You said that, well, what was that about the corporations use money for votes? In the lobbyists, uh, popular election counts for zero percent. Zero percent of who gets elected in the office. Popular vote does not matter. The electoral college is run by lobbyists. The corporations Actually, the electoral college is not run by lobbyists. The electoral college is each state gets a number of electors which is equal to the number of representatives plus the two senators. Yes, and usually those people that are voted in are paid by the corporation. Actually, no, those people are determined by the popular vote within the states, and they are placed, their names are given by the parties. You really think the corporations don't have enough money to pay most of the people there? How many diehard voters actually go to the precinct meeting after the election of the vote? Okay, but the dollars themselves are not casting ballots. They're buying, they're swaying the vote. Money has a louder voice in this country than the people. Right, and the people listen to the corporation of, oh, well, GE says that so-and-so is a good candidate, so I'm going to vote for this candidate that this corporation yeah, told me to head, vote for. get their money and their sponsorship out of the election. Right. They but the people are still the ones casting the ballots. And the people are still casting ballots for the incumbents. Ninety percent of federal congressmen are continuously re-elected. The people that go to the GOP party, the convention, the ones that actually make the vote, most of them are lobbyists. Most of them are paid by the corporation. Not many people go to a precinct meeting to even start the process of becoming a representative of their country. state, their country. I've been to a meeting. And do you think that if the ballot access rules were easier to where a regular person could get on the ballot, that that would change things? Yes. Okay, so why are you not protesting in support of ballot access? You're just protesting corporations, which are given special privilege by the government, who then they go back to the government and say, give us special privilege. It's a cyclical thing of where the government is being bought by the corporations and the government gives the money back to the corporations. I understand what you're saying, but the people that are voting are representing the corporations and not the actual people. Uh, if we can get the corporations' money from the centralized bank out of control of our money, and you get paid for what? Then the people that are going to be in those meetings are going to be regular people representing the people around them themselves. Become more democratic just by getting the corporations out of power. Okay.
Okay. So you're saying just get corporate influence out of elections, yes. but still allow the government to give corporations special benefits? Well, they won't because the government will then be listening to the people. The people, if the majority of the people don't want it done, it's not going to get done. Okay, well, the majority of the people don't want it done now, yes, but it happens. Because our votes don't matter as long as the corporations are buying it. But your vote, and, uh, I, I'm playing devil's advocate here, because I, I think you know the system's corrupt, and with 90% of congressmen getting reelected, you know the vote doesn't matter. But if 90% of the congressmen still get reelected, even without corporate influence on the election, nothing will change, because you're still putting the same people back in charge. Corporations don't run the electoral college. The electoral college was established by the U.S. Constitution. Yes, yeah, but right now they're the ones in control of it. With their money, with their power, they basically control which way the vote goes. I've been in a precinct meeting the last election, and I saw that at the second level of voting at the precinct, that it didn't matter what the people voted, the person that was making the one vote, he had to say whatever he wants. Well, it isn't that just as good of an argument that political parties have too much influence in the system? So let's just get rid of political parties. We all need political parties. We all don't always stand for the same thing. Now, if you get the money out of politics, period, from corporations, the parties will straighten themselves up by the people's vote. Once the popular vote counts 100%, everything will start to straighten itself out. Okay, and then uh, your sign says we're the 99%, yeah. but yet it's hard to get half a percent of people to agree on anything. So are you saying that 99% of the people agree, no. but yet they just aren't making their voice heard? That's not actually what it means. 99% are the 99% of people that don't have control of the money. 1% is the Federal Reserve and the rest of the centralized banks in the world. They're run by the exact same people. Any final words? 